Okay, welcome to Collaborative Statistics, Chapter 4, uh, Discrete Random Variables. So, uh, discrete random variables are um, probabilities, and but they are countable. So we have, uh, we know exactly how many things that we are looking at. Um, we put the space here by a big letter X, and we donate the actual outcomes as a lower letter X. I don't know, so it's <laughs> too different. But so you're going to see these things um, in the the space that we're looking at. Uh, but I, so I just want to let you know that one is a capital X for the whole space versus the pro so we're looking at the probability of all the things or the probability of one thing that is occurring. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. So again, we're going to have probability distribution functions. Um, similar to what we looked at uh, last chapter. Um, but now in this case, we're actually going to talk about them. So here we had, um, last time we had the probability of, you know, heads and tails and uh, picking um, a, we just look at the probability of an outcome occurring, you know, having uh, red hair you know, out of a group of people. Now we're looking at discrete things. So we're going to be able, these are going to be countable things. So we're looking at the probability of having five heads, you know, if we're flipping a coin um, out of, if we're flipping it to five times, what's the probability of that happening? We're going to see different types of uh, probabilities um, as well as uh, standard ones, so which are table uh, generated. Um, so we're going to list them in a table. And so here, this is a similar, this is a simple one. We have fi uh, 50 things that are occurring. Okay, and this is our total number of things that are occurring. The probability of getting zero is two out of 50. The probability of getting one is 11 out of 50. The probability of getting uh, two is 23 out of 50. The probability of getting three is 90. So these things have to add up to 50. You know, five out of 50. So this is the, the total things that could occur. Um, and, so now when we go through them, we could find the probability of getting less than two. Well, less than two is, you know, two, zero, and one. Remember, we have to include zero because things can occur none of the time, okay, of these five items. We could have zero successes, okay? So we have to add those things together. The probability of getting more than two would be three, four, and five. So here we'd add these successes, okay? in this probability distribution. There's others, the binomial Poisson, which we're going to cover in, in the chapter. Uh, they also mention the geometric and hypergeometric, which we aren't going to copy, uh, cover in the chapter. So um, while they're, they exist, we won't be talking about them. So uh, we're only going to look at these top two, these binomial and the Poisson. So the binomial, oh, not yet. Um, they, just like other things, have a mean and a standard deviation, okay? So the mean and the expected value are the same. And to calculate it, the mean, we have to multiply the probability times the outcome, you know, for, and then add them all up. So as I'll show you here in a table, here's our outcomes, here's our probabilities, and we multiply them together. That's this column here. When we add them up, this is our mean or expected value. So from this distribution, the value we would expect to see most often is 2.1. Okay, that's the average. So, you know, about two, I guess. And we can see that, you know, that's, that's the highest thing that occurs. So it, it, they usually tend to fall in that way. You know, the, the, highest the highest probable thing occurring tends to be the thing that happens the most. So, we also have the standard deviation, which says again, just like in standard deviation when we did with means in chapter two, we find the deviations from the mean. Now, in this case, because it's a probability, we multiply it by the, we square them because we're going to have positives and negatives. We multiply it by the probability, we add them, and then we take the square root. So, this shows here where we took our x's, all right, our 0 minus our mean, we square it, multiply by our probability, all the way down. 
then we add them together. This is the variance, but that's not what we need. We need the square root of this value. So we would take the square root of 1.05, so, and we would get our, our number for our standard deviation. Now, the special ones, the binomial, okay, this is a thing where, the reason it's binomial, it has two things that can occur. We have success and failure. Okay. Now that doesn't failure is not necessarily a bad thing. All right. Okay. It just means that it wasn't the thing we were looking for. So if I'm flipping a, a coin, I have heads and tails, and I want heads, so tails would be considered a failure. If I'm looking at gender, and we have male and female, and I want female, male would be considered a, the failure in this case. So if this was a drug test that ensures females. We want we would want to have females to be the outcome. So if we get a male, then that was a failure in that case. Um, if we want, if we're looking at something that has more than one outcome, so we have um, yes, no, and undecideds, and we're looking at yeses, then nos and undecideds are failures. Okay, we would put that because it's what we want and what we don't want, the opposite, so we're looking at the complements. Okay, so we usually look at two things, so it either happened or it didn't happen. Okay, um, so if there's more than one thing that could possibly occur, those all are put into the failure category. So if I'm looking for red cars and I look through, I have red cars and not red cars. I don't have red cars and blue, green, white, black. I have red cars and not red cars. So I would have uh, agree and not agree. I would have yes and I would have un not yes. Okay, male and not male. Okay, those are my choices to, to allow me to get my bin binomial distributions. And we have n trials. Okay, that's how many times we've done this. All right. So when we look at this, we can get our mean or our expected value, which is how many times we do it, times the probability of success. That's how we find our expected value. All right. If we, the standard deviation, we have the square root of the number of times we tried it times our successes. So here's our mean times our probability of failure. So let's look at this. If we had um, 20 things, okay, and the probability of success is 40%. So our mean is 20 times 0.4 or 8. So now here our standard deviation would be 20 times 0.4 times 0.6, because remember this is 1 minus p. So I'd have uh, 8 times 0.6 is, uh, sorry, <laughs> just like uh, 4.8, and then I would take the square root of 4.8. Of course I didn't give myself something easy to work with, but that's how it would end up coming out. So we'd have the square root of 4.8 is our standard deviation. And you'll see this in the book. It's written as x. The distribution of x is uh, simulated by the binomial with n and p. So the number of, outcome, number of attempts times the probability of success. And the probability of success. So I would just write down capital X follows capital B, parentheses, 20, and 0.6, in the case that we were just looking at. All right? So that's how we would write it, and she's going to look for that in, in the book. And it's so just, it, it's, you could write it out in words, and that's fine. This is a binomial distribution of 20 values of 20 attempts with a 0.6 chance of success. But to make life easy, we abbreviate it in this format for the book. The other one we're going to look at is the Poisson distribution. So the Poisson has to do with um, events occurring at a fixed time. Um, so you know how often a bus comes through, okay? And then how long might you have to wait? Um, you know, phone calls. You know, at a phone center, uh, pages you can read. Um, they have to notice it says here they have to have an average rate of time and the things have to be independent. Same thing occurs for binomial. If I'm flipping a coin, those are independent of each other. Everything is, we're always looking for independent. Okay. Um, in this case, they're 
in, in the Poisson, they're independent of the time since the last one. So it has no effect. You know, yes, they should run every 10 minutes. The bus should be here every 10 minutes. But if one gets here, uh, when one gets here in 10 minutes, it starts, you know, our time starts, it shouldn't affect the next one that goes through, comes along. Um, and as they get uh, larger, okay, um, we can approximate a binomial if the success is small, tiny, and the uh, trials are large. So as, so we have to have a large number of things and a small number of uh, successes small. Okay, we can use the binomial distribution. But, you know, it has its own distribution. It's on the calculator. Um, I'll show you how to set it up. Um, but, oops. Again, we have a formula. Looks very similar to this binomial. Mu, the expected value is n successes times the probability. Okay, so they're going to tell you what the average time is. Okay, that's going to become our probability. Our standard deviation is just the square root of the mean. So because we don't have failures in this case, we have just accept the probability of things occurring. How, how often? So we just take the square root of our mean and we find our standard deviation. And this is written as um, x it's follows mu, um, but really it's lambda. Uh, lambda is the uh, Poisson distribution symbol, so uh, that's why you'll see that sometimes um, in there as well. But so I just wanted you to know that it exists. It's in our book. We use the mu, um, but you, know, you may see lambda uh, in the future. So that's everything for chapter four. Um, we'll see you in class, and we'll do a lot of these problems um, on binomial and Poisson distributions um, just to give you practice. And um, but this is the general gist of chapter four.